Okay, guys, I'm going to be continuing to experiment with context engineering today. Today, we're going to be doing something slightly different where we use Docker to run the service, get it to test itself, self improve, and then the final product that we get should hopefully be of much higher quality. Okay, so as usual, I have the context engineering intro set up. I have my Claude MD. I've just added this stuff about the Docker. So Claude knows that it's actually got access to Docker. Nothing much has changed from yesterday. This is literally all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to make a node backend, HTML5, CSS, ES for the front end. Um, there should be a marketing front end. Then behind a login, there should be a um, dashboard backend. I'm just going to say use MongoDB. Uh, I have it installed. Use the CLI, CLI to set it up, etc. You don't have to use Mongo. You can use MySQL. It's just last time I did this, it used Mongo. So I'll just use Mongo um, just because that's what it set up. Now, interestingly, it just deleted my entire project. So I'm actually having to run this again. But I'm going to show you guys how I do this. So the first thing I do is I go on WSL and I do Claude dangerously skip permissions. This is such a huge advantage for trying to do what we are trying to do here. Then what I normally do is I go to my school community. Yes, that is a genuine step that I take. It's not just me plugging this. I genuinely do go to the school community and I go to the Claude code section here and the context engineering template right here. This is also available in various places online for free. I'm just going to add one thing. You must use Docker during the building process to test everything. So it just works and the server runs and I can then test, etc. Okay, so let's send the first prompt here. What this does is it just reads everything um, so that I know that it's actually reading everything properly and will actually follow everything properly as well. You can see here it's using multiple tools at the same time. And then it should just give me a summary of all of my uh, instructions for uh, creating a PRP for this exact process that I'm trying to perfect. I will say right now I had some pretty good success with this. It wasn't perfect, but um, I did manage to make a CRM pretty easily and pretty quickly. And obviously creating a CRM is, is not easy, but with Node, I, I, I'm using Node, just so you guys know, I'm using a Node backend this time, just because it was recommended to me. And it does seem to have its advantages for sure. If you are interested in the school community, if you just want to get things uh, delivered in a more kind of user-friendly way, or if you just need a bit more help with certain things like Docker, GitHub, MCPs, all that good stuff, then definitely check out the school community. It'll be the first link in the description. Now, another way you could do this instead of using Gina, if you are worried about proxies or anything like that, if you don't want to get banned from Google, definitely check out Bright Data. They have a really, really good MCP that you could use for this process as well. Or you could just set up um, their API basically on your computer. But I would probably recommend their MCP server, to be honest with you, Bright Data MCP. So the reason you would use this over something like uh, Gina is just because you've got the advantage of proxies. You don't have to worry about getting banned. And it does basically the same thing. Kind of the only difference between the two is Gina's just a bit easier to set up. Um, Gina's just like one line of code, whereas, you know, the MCP can be quite difficult to set up. However, the good thing about Bright Data is you won't get as many um, like broken pages because it will retry or it's just better at scraping and all that stuff. So that will be a link in the description as well. Get yourselves $15 free credit with Bright Data. And thanks to Bright Data for sponsoring the channel. Okay, so that's now done that. And it says here, use Docker, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm trying totally new things in this video. Okay, um, just so you know. Well, not totally new things. I'm just, I'm still working on this process. I'm very close to having this perfect. So I'm just going to say, please spin up multiple age sub agents to speed up research and get going. Okay, guys, so this is how it works. I've shown this a little bit before, um, but basically, oh, Jesus, wait, I don't have enough balance. Hang on. 
Okay, so just so you know, a little secret with Gina is you can use it completely for free. Um, so if I just go on in incognito tab and copy this API key, oops, and then say use this API key, that API key is out of credits, then it'll change to this API key and we won't have this problem that says um, insufficient balance. So we should see this start again. Let's just change, let's just remove this page. Okay, these are all the documentations I mentioned, which is perfect. So now it's just gonna do a load of research. Okay, so there we go. Now we have our open, re uh, open, um, open router research, API keys, all that good stuff. Node.js, MongoDB, Express and Routing, data modeling, all that good stuff. So it's just gonna start filling these in so that it has these as references from now on. Okay, so you can see here that we're at this point, it's just to create the PRP, right? So normally you run slash clear, right? Or slash compact. I think I am currently testing not doing either of those things, just so you know. So execute PRP and then paste this. I'm just gonna remove the stuff about React because I do not want it to use React. Um, so we'll just get rid of this. Honestly, I'm just going to get rid of front front end UI. I deleted front end UI UX research as it was wrong, and I don't want to react. So I don't know if you can actually put things here, but it is what it is. I'm just going to press escape as well and say remember to use Docker. So and self test so everything. This starts and works. Okay, so this is what has been created. I didn't realize it was on 8080 for some reason. Okay. Uh, let's go sign in. Let's see if anything works. So the sign in button doesn't work. Classic. Okay, so we now have a register page. Everything's working pretty damn well, to be honest with you. Um, let's see. Um, Okay, let's create an account, let's see if it works. Let's see if there's any console stuff. Doesn't seem to be working. It's almost there though, I'm pretty sure. Just doesn't seem to be registering for some reason. Okay, there we go. And we actually have an account as well. Beautiful. Let's see if we can create a task. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, so overall, this entire process was much simpler, okay, to get to this point here where you have a working, like, system, right, where you can even sign in. Let's see if it actually lets me sign in. There we go. Redirecting to dashboard. Now I just need to actually create the implementation and everything. This was a much, much better build than any other system that I've used, except step-by-step -step prompting, but that just takes too long. Overall, it was about half an hour. I have a dashboard. I have um, a database. I have basically everything that I need. I just need to make the dashboard actually working. So one thing that I have to say is it didn't do an amazing job of actually creating the functionality, but it did a much better job of creating something that was actually like ready to go. So the good thing about having it on Docker, right, is like every time there's an update, it, the, the update is instantly added to here. And also it did a lot of the bug fixing itself. Normally this shit takes ages getting it to this point and also having an, an actual sign in process as well. Okay, so like I said, the amazing thing about this is uh, with Docker, everything just gets updated in real time. So every time it updates the code, it instantly shows the code update here. Okay, so to be honest with you, in two hours, we've, we've managed to get to this point. We have a basic functioning CRM MVP. Now, from this point onwards, we can just very easily add new features. This is built on Node, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, there's a few things missing, the homepage and stuff, the SEO, stuff like that. The homepage is actually fine, um, but 
you know, we have the login, we have everything, the sign up works, redirects into dashboard. This is a pretty good state to be in, to be honest with you. Now we're very close to having this as an AI powered thing. All we're doing right now is just, fi we're just bug fixing. I think it could have done this itself. It's just, I wanted to get this done for the video. What I'd recommend is making sure that it's testing all endpoints. And then basically you do have to do some bug fixing just because of the way that like, you know, something can work when you use a curl request, but when you actually click a button like this, maybe it doesn't work. And it's very hard to get it to also do that as well. Now you could use an MCP and that might be the next part to this. Now it looks like it might have actually generated there. So AI subtasks generated correctly. Oh, wow, there we go. <laughs> okay. So we now have an AI powered um, CRM. That's actually pretty crazy. So conduct the audit, keyword research, on-page SEO, improve page speed, mobile, opt mobile optimization, set up tracking analytics, review and finalize changes. It's actually done. Wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. This is the fastest I've ever gone from nothing to having some kind of prototype. So this works. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add Puppeteer and I'm going to make it so it uses Puppeteer to do this part automatically because um, sending, I, I don't know if it needs Puppeteer, but basically just needs to be able to send the browser console logs somehow to um, the AI. And then pretty much like you should be able to build a SaaS MVP in 30 minutes with this system. And yeah, very few errors. Very, very nice process. It worked, guys. I'm very, very happy with this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the school community if you want to support me. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, as usual, you're an absolute legend. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out. Oh, one more thing. Sorry, just to quickly mention. This is like, it, it's better than if I just vibe coded this because it's built with things like WebSockets and security. It's using Node, it's using Node packages, all that good stuff, right? So it's kind of like a framework, um, just because Node is a framework. But yeah, I don't know. This seems like a very interesting process to me. Peace out.